Welcome to the 2023 NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Championship Selection Show. The field of 16, who plays whom, where and when will be unveiled next. The last time we were in Tampa for a Frozen Four, seven years ago, this happened. He's slick. Look at Besser. There he is again. Stick checks him off. Goes in front. Back to Score! Drake Kajula! And lightning strikes for North Dakota early in the third. Besser striking down the middle of the ice. Here comes Besser. Besser. Oh, good stick check by Taves. Back to Kajula! Lightning strikes twice! For the first time in 16 years, Stick a grand forks in them. North Dakota, champions of the college hockey world. And again, we're back in Tampa in April. And that's the championship trophy once again they will be playing for. John Butchergoss, Sean Richland, Andrew Raycroft. Sean, you won a couple of those national championship trophies with Michigan. Uh, you know what it's all about, and this is the time of year. This is why you lift all those weights. Uh, it's a great feeling. Lots of excitement, energy in the locker rooms for all of these players right now. The anxious, the nervous energy, and we're ready to play. And what a great conference finals we had. Mm, and uh, so much talent, Andrew, all around college hockey. So much exciting players. So many exciting players, and to see them on stage next week in the regionals is going to be exciting. Well, before we begin to unveil the brackets and the matchups, again, how we got here, there was so much going on. One of the most exciting weekends in the history of college hockey in terms of conference championships. Uh, Minnesota State can't play boring games, Sean. No, every conference championship to them always seems to end up in a wide variety of excitement, and they win down two zip with a few minutes to go, and they win in overtime. Huge win for Mike Hastings in Minnesota State. Zach Kronick, a beautiful goal. Here's Alex Young. This put Colgate up 2-0, and what a story in Colgate's Cinderella story, Andrew. Oh, we talk about beautiful goals. What a goal and what a Cinderella story, like you say, Butchie. Uh, Colgate getting into the tournament the last second. Huge, huge story there for them. And of course, Boston University knew they were going to go to the tournament, but you want to win a Hockey East Championship and you want to do it in overtime. Wow, this guy's got it on his tape. Lane Hudson, what a great shot. And they are playing like one of the best teams in the country at the end of the year. And that's when Jay Pandolfo wants them to play their best. Yeah, the 19 year old had a one timer in regulation. And then that wrist shot that finds the back of the net. And BU raises the Hockey East trophy. So these are the final uh, pairwise rankings, uh, computer rankings, of course, with attendance factors, and you don't want to have a matchup in the first round of, of conference opponents, other factors. There are some changes within the uh, true math, and that's what you're wondering about there at home. Who's going to play whom, and where are they going to go? And that's what we're here for tonight. At first, of course, is the number one seeds, and we know what those are coming into today. You see Minnesota, they're the top overall seed. They are in Fargo. Denver, the defending national champs. They will go to Manchester, New Hampshire. Michigan goes to Allentown, which means a possible road game scenario if Penn State uh, can take care of business there. Of course, Penn State is a host school. We know they will be there. And Quinnipiac, disappointing ECAC tournament, but they're still very confident about what their team has this year. What do you see the number one seed? Similarities, differences? What's the flavor there? Well, I think when you look at Minnesota and Michigan, I think all throughout the season they've proven to be a great team. But D Denver being the defending national champion, it's going to be interesting for them to see how they set up when they finished up as the four uh, seed. So the fourth number one seed. Right. It's going to be interesting for them when they go to battle how it plays out. And we haven't talked about Quinnipiac, who's actually yep. the closest to home as that number one seed, playing right around the corner in Bridgeport. Can they take advantage of that and, and use their stifling defense yep. to get out of the regionals? And again, despite their loss in the tournament, they're still a confident, confident mm -hmm. bunch. So let's see what's going on in Fargo. And here are the matchups. We mentioned Minnesota, year five for Bob Motzko. They lost to Minnesota State. Uh, in the semifinal last year, their last title for the Gophers, 2003. They opened against Canisius, who began 5-12-2, large and in charge. Trevor Large played at Ferris State. <laughs> he beat North Dakota back in 2003, lost to Minnesota then. Minnesota went on to win the title, so he's looking for some revenge. You see at the bottom there, St. Cloud State, not ranked when the season began, got to number one for a week. They play Minnesota State, 11th year for Mike Hastings. He's made two straight frozen fours, lost last year in the final to Denver. They were 10-9 at Christmas, and they come storming back. But what makes the Minnesota Golden Gophers so good? Wow, they're so deep up front. Offensively, this is just a dynamic team. The top line of Cooley, Snuggerud, and Matthew Nyes, best line in college hockey. Two freshmen come in for Bob Motzko's team, and they dominate. Oh, and they have a few good defensemen back yeah. there, too. Brock Faber, Johnson, Mike Kester. 
and Jackson Lacombe, some of the best defensemen in the country. Minnesota is an absolute wagon, and they're going to be a tough out for anybody. That bracket is awfully interesting. That's a 9 o'clock <laughs> Eastern, 8 o'clock local game in Fargo on ESPN2 uh, against Canisius. Well, and Canisius, can they, can they put up a fight yeah. against the number one team in the country? Can they? They've been one and done. They've been playing their hearts out the last few weeks, knowing they had to win their last game to continue. Can they do that and bring that energy, that intensity to Minnesota? And St. Cloud State, big injury with uh, Dylan Anhorn. He was on his way to maybe a, a Hobie type of season, but broken ankle. St. Cloud State will miss him in their game against Minnesota State. 5 o'clock Thursday, 4 o'clock in Minnesota, ESPNU. Let's go to Bridgeport. That's where I'll be with Colby Cohen, Quinnipiac, number two overall seed. Last time, Frozen Four in Tampa. We saw you lost a title game. How about Merrimack? Coach Scott Bark, six year, 7 24 and three in year one. And now here he is in the tournament, just the third time for the school. And there's Harvard and Ohio. Ohio State. They uh, finish up the Bridgeport region down there. Harvard, Teddy Donato's 18th year, seventh tournament, was at a Frozen Four with his son Ryan in 2017. Only title at Harvard. Teddy was on the team, of course, as a player in 1989. That's a 2 o'clock ESPNU start as Ohio State and Steve Rollick also finishes out the bracket. What about Quinnipiac stifling defense, and they also can score. Uh, Colin Graff is a great goal scorer. I talked to Chris Masters here, coached him at Boston Junior Bruins times. He said he's been scoring goals since he was a mite. He put up great <laughs> points. So they can put up offense, but defensively, uh, this is a team in Rand Pecknold's history as a coach in college hockey. They are stifling. They're hard to get to the net on. They play in the difficult areas in front of the net as well as anybody. Mm, that's a Friday 5.30 game, ESPN News. Uh, Quinnipiac and Merrimack as Colin Graff, second in the country in scoring. And again, Merrimack, what a story. We mentioned what they've uh, been through, obviously, throughout the entire year, and here they are in the tournament. Team of destiny. That's how they feel okay. about themselves. And they just went, they played a double overtime game in the quarterfinals of hockey, double overtime in the semifinals, and then went, took BU two overtime last night in the garden. They are a hard out. They're mm. a big, strong team that clogs up the neutral zone, does not give much. It will be an absolute mm. defensive battle. Alex Jeffries leads the Warriors in scoring. A lot of blue and gold in that one again. Friday, 5.30, ESPN News, Quinnipiac and Merrimack. That's half the field for you. We have half a field to go. The full bracket reveal of this year's tournament. Committee chair Jeff Shulman joins the show to explain the challenges for this year's bracket. Bob Mosco would join us. Jay Pandolfo would join us as well. This is the men's selection show, and it continues after this. As once again, we thank you for watching at home, and we thank you for all the teams getting together to find out where they play and where they will make their travel plans and where they will begin scouting tonight. Our last three national championships, Duluth in Buffalo, mm. UMass in Pittsburgh, and last year in Boston, the Denver Pioneers with their eighth or tied with Michigan. All time, most college hockey national championships, and Michigan's going to Allentown, crank the Billy Joel. <laughs> Michigan lost in the semifinal last year to Denver in overtime. That's an 8.30 Friday night start. Sean, you'll be there. They'll play Colgate. Way to go, Don Bond. 30th year on the bench. First ECAC title. Second in school history. Penn State, the host school. 11th year under Guy Godowski all of a sudden. That's Friday night, 5 o'clock with Sean Richland and Clay Matvick. Kevin Wall, 16 goals for the Nittany Lions. Michigan Tech, Joe Shahan, six year. Three natties in that school's history. The last one came in 1975. Ryland Mosley, the leading scorer for the Huskies. So the Michigan Wolverines, Sean, you know something about them. What's their story this year? Uh, this is a deep team with a lot of offense. Of course, the freshman Adam Fantilli came in this year, leading scorer in the country. He plays well in all three zones, always around the puck, and is an absolutely difficult guy to defend. And of course, they have Luke Hughes on defense, who may be the most talented defenseman in the country. For them to win, they got to play good defense, and I think they've started to recognize that as they've gone into playoff time. Well, for Colgate, right? Mm -hmm. They've been the similar to the other teams that just got in, had to win out, had to win their tournament to get into this, into the national championships. Can they carry that momentum over mm -hmm. against the high flying Michigan Wolverines? It's going to be a tough question. And the thing is, they have been playing competitive games, though, just like Michigan has down the stretch in the Big Ten tournament. Don Vaughn succeeded Terry Slater after his passing in 1991. Slater coached Barry Melrose for the Cincinnati Whoa. Stingers <laughs> in the old WHA. Stingers. So.
<laughs> so uh, great stuff there. Let's go to Manchester, New Hampshire now and see what that bracket looks like. Of course, Denver's on top, 39, lots of injuries right now. They have eight players with double-digit goals this year. They are deep. Carter Mazur is 22 to lead them. They'll take on Cornell, first tournament since 2020 for Mike Schaefer and the boys. Their last title, 1970, Gabe Seeger, their leading score. And there's, how about this first-round matchup? This is take-the-over matchup between <laughs> BU and Western Michigan. This is going to be fun to watch. Jay Pandolfo, year one, he and Joe Pereira back in the tournament. Of course, Lane Hudson's outstanding. Uh, Pandolfo won a natty as a player back in 1995 in Providence 28 years ago. That's a 2 p.m. start. That's the first game of the tournament. BU, Western Michigan, ESPNU uh, on Thursday. Let's talk about the Pioneers. Some injuries for Matt Carl and the boys to overcome. Yeah, they're going to have to work through some injuries and then some goaltending issues in the NCHC tournament. But this is a team that knows how to win. They won the national championship last year. Carter Mazur is an electric player. Great Detroit Red Wings draft pick, and he's a guy that can definitely carry a team. I look for Denver to do all things well. They play well in the neutral zone, they forecheck hard, and they come back through the middle defensively as well as anyone in the country. And Coach David Carl's team is definitely one of the best teams, and that deserving of the top seed. And they know what it takes. Mm -hmm. Just doing it last season. Can they bring that experience all the way east mm -hmm. against a BU team who's right around the corner? They're going to be fighting some injuries as well, losing Case McCarthy in the hockey semifinals, Drew Camesso, and, of course, Lane Hudson. Yeah, Manchester and BU kind of go together like BC and Worcester do that could lead to bigger and better things. And for BU fans watching, do they have a team that could win the national championship? Yeah, this bracket's really tough. It's going to be interesting to see. BU has been playing some great hockey, and Coach Pandolfo knows their team is – hot coming into the tournament. It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out in this bracket. So overall, the field breakdown, you kind of like how Michigan's draw might look for them. I think it's a good draw for Michigan for sure. They're in Allentown. They're familiar with uh, uh, Penn State if they get through Michigan Tech, which is going to be a tough out. Michigan Tech mm -hmm. has had an awesome season and probably one of the best teams in the country defensively. But I think their path is, is interesting. BU, Denver in the same bracket, that is, that is going to be a, mm. a tough one. And, of course, if Penn State wins, Andrew, I mean, last time they brought like 12,000 fans to that arena in Allentown. So Michigan could face kind of a road game to try to get to Tampa. And, and that counts for something. Yeah. It, it certainly does. On, on the Saturday, Sunday, on the regionals, that home ice advantage will be a factor if mm. it gets to that point. And it'll be interesting to see how the number one seed, Michigan, if they get through, deals with that. But I think all these athletes would rather play in an environment like oh, that than yeah. a quiet environment uh, like a library uh, someplace they never visit uh, on their time on campus. Uh, 2023 Men's Ice Hockey Championship. Here's the field breakdown for you right now again. NCAA tournament appearances by Minnesota and Michigan most all time. Combined national titles. Most bids by one conference, Big Ten and ECAC for each.